Hey everyone, I'm excited to say that in the last few months I added two more pairs of designer heels to my collection and I believe my shoe collection is very much complete. As you know, I already own a number of stilettos and heeled boots, so my focus was on a pair of loafers and mules for greater comfort and diversity. Next month, I'll be sharing with you my Chanel mules, but today the spotlight is on my Gucci leather mid-heel loafers with faux pearl embellishments. Of course, I chose the highest block heel height available because I am on the shorter end, so I love to have every opportunity to elongate my legs. For those of you who watch my Gucci Bloom's Dionysus bag review, you'll know that I've already covered the history of the Gucci brand. And so today my focus will be on seven other areas. Design features, sizing, comfort, quality, accessories, my purchase story, and of course my verdict. Today I have to admit that the reveal is a little bit bittersweet. I have been crushing on these loafers for more than two years, so it meant that when I was in store ready to buy, my number one preferred style was actually discontinued. So these shoes are a little bit of a compromise in terms of what I actually had in mind. And finally, thank you so much to my amazing subscribers for joining me again. You guys are superb and I love your feedback. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. When it came to choosing my first and only ever loafer, I knew it had to be Gucci. Although slip-on laceless shoes have been around since the 19th century, it was Gucci's groundbreaking 1953 design which forever changed the style and meaning of the shoe. While loafers were always brown, emphasizing their comfortable and casual nature, Gucci released loafers in glossy black launching them into the world of formal attire. Their newfound elegance was cemented by the addition of the decorative snaffle bit, which references the wealthy and sophisticated culture of English writing. Overnight, Gucci loafers became synonymous with wealthy Europeans and Hollywood royalty, and in the 1970s became the unofficial uniform of Wall Street bankers. It's amazing to think that since their launch more than a century ago, loafers have never gone out of style. They are one of the few shoe phenomenons which are unisex, ageless, and worn across the style spectrum, whether it be streetwear or preppy or office attire. I believe the only style which loafers are not is sexy. Thanks to the full coverage and comfortable low block heel, the loafer is intrinsically prim, proper, with a sort of quiet glamour in a relaxed, masculine way. You may think that falling under the Gucci spell is a straightforward path, but that's just the first step into a whole new world. Gucci now offers loafers in six different styles. Platform, Sylvie, Mid-Heel, Jordan, Brixton, slash Horsebit, or Princeton which results in four different heel heights, five different embellishments, and a rainbow of finishes, whether it be leather that's grained, patent, suede, or metallic, or fabrics like velvet and tweed, not to mention loud extras like wool trim. The Jordan can be considered the Gucci loafer OG, the most traditional, classic, understated, and masculine design. And probably very little has changed since Gucci first launched its loafer more than 60 years ago. The Brixton is almost identical, except that it has side stitching, so that the heel can be collapsible, allowing you the option of wearing the loafer like a slipper, and people generally say that this non-fitted rear of the shoe results in a softer leather type, which makes it even more comfortable. The Princeton shares the same classic front profile with the horse bit detail, but is actually a slipper. As much as these three models are the very backbone of the Gucci loafer legacy, I immediately ruled them out because I have flat feet and flat soled shoes don't give me any of the support I need. Not to mention that with a thin sole, you can quickly wear out a very expensive shoe, especially if you're like me and you have a heavy stride because I'm always power walking. As I mentioned earlier, I am unfortunately on the shorter end, so my automatic go-to is heels, and my favorite height is the mid-heel. It's high enough to elongate your legs, but it's also low enough to feel like a natural arch, so you're not straining yourself, especially if you pair it with the day-long comfort of a block heel. The conservative, modest Gucci loafer full shoe profile is a match made in heaven for the block heel. 
the loafer takes on a demure ladylike slightly retro appearance and you end up with a heel that is as pragmatic to wear as it is versatile and timeless to style. When it came to colour and material, I knew 100% I was choosing black leather. At its most simplest, black is a low maintenance neutral colour which pairs with everything. The slip on nature suggests a casual elegance which makes the shoe a perfect companion for your relaxed outfits. However, when you combine this with glossy black leather rather than a daytime white or brown, you suddenly add a layer of formality. The mid-heel loafer becomes effortlessly dressy, like you're not even trying to look fabulous, it's just an accidental side effect. The fancier side of the Gucci loafer emerges through the range of embellishments. Personally, I find the classic horse bit too traditional and too masculine. I felt the archival gold medal chain was too much retro bling. The centered double G buckle screams a bit too much Gucci and the fold over fringe with rounded toe softened the shoe too much, exaggerating a feminine, slightly homely aesthetic. For me, the perfect balance between the timeless cool of the masculine cut and the modern empowered Gucci female is the leather mid-heel loafer. While the double G is a little loud for my tastes, I adore the retro touch of the blue and red band. Compared to leather, which carries a sense of formality, fabric naturally suggests a more relaxed persona, not to mention a fantastic yet restrained pop of color. My other favorite part, which made this shoe an absolute winner in my books, is the toe detail. I love the square toe. Combined with the pronounced upright leather tongue, the shoe profile is really striking with sculptural edges. It's masculine, it's retro, it's tailored. Since a square toe was a must in my collection, this really narrowed down the range of Gucci loafers that I would choose. Essentially, it is only this design in either white or black leather in low or medium heel height. However, to me, these heels are not perfect. You may remember me mentioning at the beginning of this video that I was forced to compromise. I had actually wanted this shoe without the faux pearl embellishments, but they were discontinued worldwide. Now, that may sound strange because I actually love wearing pearls, but here with this timeless, elegant black shoe, I'm a strong believer that less is more. Sure, the pearls are fun and youthful and they guarantee that anyone who sees you from behind knows you're wearing Gucci, but on the other end, these rather superficial additions, I'm concerned they date stamp the shoe. Perhaps as I get older or fashion trends shift, these plastic looking pearls, they may not stand the test of time. These shoes are the only pair I own from Gucci, but in terms of loafers, I do agree with the sizing advice that was widespread online. You should go for a half size down from what you usually wear. For me, when I tried 37, my usual size, it was obviously large and my heel would fall out every time I arched my foot. Here instead with the 36.5, it's a perfect fit and I dare say even a little bit snug if I'm wearing thick socks. Apparently the leather does stretch with wear so likely that snug feeling would disappear with time. I have to admit I have not once worn this shoe with the heel flipped down and I don't ever anticipate doing so. So unfortunately I can't comment on the sizing in that style but I guess it's common sense obviously the shoe would be a looser fit because you'll have the extra room at the back. Everyone online has raved about the comfort factor of the classic Jordans, the Brixton, and I'm glad to say that the leather mid-heel loafer, even with the moderate arch, doesn't disappoint. It's a shoe I can walk in all day. Annoyingly, the care instructions and Gucci's website doesn't reveal the type of leather, but it's incredibly soft, and even after one wear, is already molding to your foot. Since the leather's soft, not stiff, I had no issue of any painful rubbing against the back of my heel. The downside is that this means creases and wrinkles form almost instantly, but I suppose it adds to the retro persona, and your shoe looks vintage when it's actually brand new. <laughs> is that a good thing? The heel is well cushioned, the interior leather lining is also soft and spongy, and of course the block heel is a sturdy day-long lifesaver. Unlike pointed toes, the square toe also gives you ample room in the front, so I have zero risk of blisters. 
However, where the mid-heel loafer falls short in comfort compared to your flat loafers is that your feet can get tired quite quickly because of the sheer weight of the block heel, which is dragging down on each of your steps. Ideally, this is a shoe you leisurely stroll around in. It's not a shoe you want to be dashing about or power walking because after a couple of hours, you're going to feel quite exhausted from the weight. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't ever intend on wearing these shoes with the back folded down, but since your heel will be resting on an extra layer of leather, can that be comfortable? I'm OCD, so I can't tolerate the thought of willingly creasing my thousand dollar shoes, but if you're brave enough, please share your thoughts on comfort. In general, I'm really happy with the quality of leather but I do have my doubts about the embellishments. Let's start with the positives. This shoe smells wondrously of leather and the leather is so buttery it almost feels like lambskin. The gloss catches the light at every angle effortlessly drawing attention to your shoes. On the inside the heel is luxurious suede while other surfaces are treated and sealed for stain resistance. Although I do try to tiptoe in these shoes, my natural habit is that I am a power walker. So I prefer shoes with a really hard heel, which are as impact resistant as possible to survive the wear and tear of my heavy stride. Here that is the case with the rubber at the base of the block heel, but the leather sole is worn very quickly. So far I've worn the shoe twice, both times of which I was walking so gently to try and baby the shoe. But you can see how quickly the leather is wearing away. One downside with the square toe is that it can be much easier to accidentally scruff, as I have done, due to the significantly larger front edge. The fibres in the fabric band feel quite plush and I'm so grateful the colours are desaturated as they will be able to hide any dirt that accumulates over time. My main qualms are with the hardware. The double G is deemed antique gold, and while I do believe it's the right colour, it's not too bright and artificial but warm and rustic, the randomness of the black markings makes it look a little too dirty to me. Especially this very obvious smear, doesn't that look like a defect? The studs and details on the pearls are all colour matched to the same antique gold, but it annoys me that every brand new pair I encountered still had some sort of a dirty smear on the pearls. Even this pair, which was actually an exchange on the original I purchased, it still has a dirty black stain across the pearl. To me, the faux pearls and studs just make me feel like I'm paying a fortune for cheap plastic. And as much as I like the little Gucci tag on the sole, the fact that I can see the glue residue is pretty disappointing. Finally, the Gucci stamp and love heart inside the shoe looks like a rush job. The stitching and leather trim around the heart is uneven, unless that was a certain look they were intentionally going for. And the gold print hardly matches the leather impression. For some reason, the black edge has stained the leather interior after my first or second wear. Perhaps the heat or sweat from my foot triggered that? If you were to only see the quality of those interior details, I think you would accidentally think I was wearing a knockoff because it's pretty disappointing for a thousand dollar shoe. My Gucci leather mid-heel loafers came with two plastic bags, two dust bags, receipt docket, and three care slash instruction booklets. I'm glad to say that unlike my Louis Vuitton Star Trail ankle boots, Gucci got the plastic bag and the dust bag size correct so my shoes can actually fit inside them. One care booklet states that the leather is not waterproof so make sure to keep it away from rain. Another states that the footwear is delicate and it is not unlikely that decorations may detach from the shoe. The last booklet states that the shoes are equipped with a radio frequency identification tag to prove authenticity, which is really fascinating, as previously I thought only Bulgari was digitally tagging their products, as I mentioned in my Serpenti handbag review. I envisioned buying my dream loafers in Vienna as a late Christmas present to myself, but unfortunately, in reality, it was a much more disappointing experience. First off, my dream shoes were discontinued. So I reluctantly opted for the pearl embellishments. As you know, I believe less is more, but the other reason was that these cheap little bits of plastic raise the price by several hundred. 
Off the top of my head, I believe the non-pearl loafers were maximum 1200 Australian, while the embellished option is 1500. I purchased my loafers for 890 euros, which converts to over 1400 Australian. Tax back was 12% and there was a fee, so ultimately I paid 1370, a 10% saving. The Aussie dollar was extremely low when I was traveling. Otherwise, today the same tax back euro price would be 1260, more than a hundred dollars in saving. I love the romance of buying on holiday, but this was a big lesson to me of how important currency conversion is and that I would have just been better just continuing to wait. I had already waited two years, so what's the big deal of waiting another half year? When we got back to the hotel room, I discovered that the Australian Gucci website still listed my dream shoes as available to order online, unembellished. I had a heart attack and the next morning I rushed back to the Vienna Gucci store to ask if they could give me a copy of my receipt so that I could exchange the shoes when I returned to Sydney as per the 14-day exchange policy. This is because my original receipt would be taken by customs when I crossed the border as part of the tax declaration process. Gucci customer service was dismal. They said their cashier wasn't working, so the most they could do was photocopy the receipt. And that's all they did. They literally just photocopied it. I asked if they could at least stamp it with some sort of official Vienna Gucci store logo because otherwise it looks so dodgy like I just did it myself at the local print store. They reluctantly agreed and they said that 100% I won't have any issues when I present this to my local Sydney store. Back in Sydney, I was told by the SA that the website data was incorrect and if I had placed an online order, it would have been cancelled because they actually had no stock. I still decided anyway to exchange my shoes because the one I got from Vienna was the last pair on display, which is never ideal and also there was a dirty smear across the pearls. The Sydney store advised that they didn't have my size, so I was better off walking 20 minutes to their other store. When I finally made my way to the other side of town, I received a really long lecture from the SA who was not impressed with the photocopied receipt. She said it didn't follow at all international Gucci protocol. To prove that my purchase was authentic, I had to pull out my credit card purchase to show her the date, the amount and the location, it all matched my receipt. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you spent so much but you're regarded with disdain by someone who's supposed to give you excellent customer service. So after this, I'm not purchasing from Gucci again. Finally, I was given a new pair of loafers but as I mentioned, the double G has that dirty smear which I'm not fond of and also the pearl still has a mark on it. For brand new thousand dollar shoes, I don't know why they can't get it right and to me it's just not acceptable. Usually I'm here presenting victorious purchases, but I have to admit my Gucci leather mid-heel loafers are a bit more of a bittersweet experience. Let's start with the positives. I'm really excited to add the immortal loafer design to my wardrobe, one which likely will never go out of style regardless of my age or dress code, whether it's casual or formal, summer or winter, tomboyish or feminine, modern or vintage, these loafers can stretch across the full style spectrum. The block heel, which is intrinsic to the shoe's retro character, is also beneficial in providing you stability and all day comfort on the go. Although I do recommend you walk slowly so that you don't tire yourself out from the sheer weight of this heel. The leather is flawless. It fits like a glove and the moment you put this shoe on you feel like you're Cinderella and you found your glass slipper. For those of you who've watched my luxury shoe care video, if the snug fit is challenging to get into, especially early on when the shoe is new, always invest in a shoe horn because that avoids excessive damage to the back of your shoe. My favorite part about the Gucci loafer is the carefree glamour which makes great style look so easy. Paired with even the most common basics like denim and white tees, well-made loafers carry a sense of history and status which elevates the whole outfit. 
While the mid-heel loafer is supposed to offer an extra level of styling flexibility through the optional fold-down rear, so you can transition into a slipper type aesthetic, I don't ever envision myself using it. Not only because I'm OCD about leather condition, but also I imagine that with a heavy shoe which is not fully enclosed, it may slip off as you're walking, especially if you're rushing about. If your feet get cold easily or like me they're a bit sweaty so you prefer to wear socks then again the slipper type aesthetic with your heels sticking out the back I don't think it's that appealing. While the shoe profile and leather show the sophisticated crafts you would expect from a luxury fashion house I must admit the little details within and also the state of the embellishment seem far less reliable. Although the Gucci loafer is a historic and almost eternal icon I believe it is absolutely overpriced. It's pretty disappointing that brand new stock carries all sorts of imperfections and these shortcuts make me question the long-term durability of the shoe. Now, I know I've probably sounded extremely harsh in my review of the pearls, but ultimately I do like the fun, bold, youthful aesthetic, just not for the ridiculous price hike and lack of quality. To me, it is completely unacceptable for Gucci to declare these embellishments as fragile and that it is normal for them to fall off. That's just not good enough. While pearls have been a hot trend for several years now, if you want the ultimate loafer that will last the next century, it's always safer to opt for a clean aesthetic where silhouette is king. Beware the choice of embellishments which may date the shoe and limit its timelessness, which in this case I believe to be the pearls and the studs. But it can also apply if you consider other trends like the fur lining or non-leather finishes. Ultimately, the Gucci loafer is a historical legacy an emblem of effortlessly cool Italian luxury, which is easy to style, convenient to grab and go, practical for your lifestyle, and always refreshing through its versatility. It was the first men's shoe to be free of branding, but be recognized a mile away as the Gucci trademark. Regardless of your stance as to the somewhat gimmicky embellishments and quality shortcuts, no one can deny the success of the classic loafer and its rightful status as an icon of elegance in everyone's wardrobe. So everyone, that brings me to the end of my review of the Gucci leather mid-heel loafers with faux pearl embellishments. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, especially if you're thinking of adding a pair of loafers to your wardrobe. Now, this month I'm actually flying to Europe so next month's video will be a scheduled upload. I'm excited to share with you guys my review of my new Chanel mules. You'll probably seen a sneak peek on my Instagram feed. Hope you guys have an amazing month. I'll see you again soon.